Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Good to see you. I'm running late today, so we're going to hop right into this. We're going to be in the Soul Stirring Songs and Hymn Book, as always. Um, we're going to sing number 439 called Count Your Blessings. Count Your Blessings, 439. Here we go. <clears throat> when... When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, When you are discouraged thinking all is lost, Count your many blessings, name them one by one, And it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Amen. Amen. Today we're going to count our blessings, and at least some of them, there's no way we can count them all because the Lord just keeps blessing us, right? Um, but anyways, uh, today we're going to start our opening reading in Ephesians. So if you have a King James Bible, we're going to uh, open up our Bibles to Ephesians, which is in the New Testament. Oh, Ephesians, where you at? Our opening reading is in Ephesians, and we're going to read verses 1 through 6 in chapter 1. If you want to follow along, the Bible says, <clears throat> Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be, to, grace, be, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be, God, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ according as he hath chosen us in him, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the Beloved. Amen. So, today we're counting our blessings. So my sermon today, I wanted to do something a little bit different than what I normally do. Um, by the way, greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. Um, in today's message, we're doing something a little bit different um, than what I normally do. But today I want to talk about the, the uh, importance of giving thanks, right? One of the old churches that I uh, used to attend... Uh, once in a while, you know, people would uh, give, just give testimonies and talk about things in their life that they uh, were thankful for or, or, you know, whatever God was doing in their life, you know, they, you can give a testimony about it. So uh, that's what I wanted to do today is give a quick testimony. And, you know, a friend of mine uh, a while back told me that, you know, what if, you know, God told you to give thanks for everything that he's given you and uh, tomorrow, the next day, uh, he would take away everything that uh, you didn't give thanks for. So, you know, that, that put things in perspective for me. That, uh, you know, we, <laughs> that, I mean, we, we can get down to everything and say thanks. Because if you, if you were to lose what you weren't thankful for, man, you'd be losing a lot. So, um, today, we're going to focus on giving thanks. And, you know, because so many times in our lives, things can go wrong. Things aren't going uh, the way that we want them to go. And if you're anything like me, if, if just one little thing doesn't go right, you know, it, it, it could put me in a bad mood, ruin the whole rest of my day, right? But, you know, um, even if everything else is going right and just this one thing goes wrong, right, it just ruins my whole day. But anyway, today I want to look at a, a passage in, in, the, in uh, the Old Testament in Job chapter 1. Um, so if you want to turn to Job chapter 1... Um, And Job is the book uh, is a book of the Bible in the Old Testament of a man who who had everything going on for him, right? He had everything. He had a great job, Job, job. 
<laughs> he had a great jo job. <laughs> he was making good money. He had a, he, he had a big family, beautiful wife. She was a loving wife, and through no fault of his own, he lost everything. And by everything, I mean only one of his uh, like I think nine children. I forget exactly how many children he had, but he had a lot of children, big family, and, and only one son survived. And so he lost everything, even his health. His health went went down the drain, all his money. And I, um, I'm, we're not going to read the whole story, but we're just going to check out a few short verses starting in verse 20. And we're going to see how Job responded to the devil taking everything away from him. Uh, look down at Job chapter 1 verse 20. It says, Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground, and worshipped, and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sinned not, nor char charged God foolishly. Job didn't turn and blame God for his problems. You know, rather he continued to worship the Lord. And he said, Blessed be the name of the Lord. So even though Job lost everything, he still gave thanks. Right? So no matter what's going on in our lives, we could always give thanks. You know, so today I wanted to put all the drama aside. Whatever's going on in your life, just forget about it for a second. Let's just take a moment and reflect on all the good things that God has done for you and for all of us in our lives. You know, let's all be like Job and say, Blessed is the name of the Lord. Instead of foolishly charging God for everything that's going wrong, let's just remind ourselves how thankful for, how thankful we are. Excuse me. Um, in the New Testament, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 18, the Bible says, In everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. So the Bible clearly says to us um, that we are to give thanks in all things, in all things. It's the will of God. That means not only when things are going right, but even when things are going wrong, we need to be thankful. No matter what's going on in our lives, we always need to be thankful. It's very important to give thanks. So um, today I wanted to give a personal testimony of a few things that I'm thankful for and um, and. You uh, watching this video, I, maybe you could uh, give some personal testimony. I mean, obviously you can't do it over the internet, but you could uh, tell God what you're thankful for in your own heart and pray. Uh, anyway, but um, before I did that, I wanted to take a look at a few examples of Jesus giving thanks in the Bible. Jesus gave thanks. He knew it was important to give thanks. So our first example, if you have a King James Bible, is going to be in John, the Gospel according to St. John chapter 6, if you want to turn there. Uh, where Jesus performs a miracle, right? This is the miracle where Jesus um, turns five loaves of, uh, uh, of bread and two small fishes and feeds thousands of people. I think they're like 5,000 people or something. Uh, we're not going to read the whole story, but just look at, uh, let's just take a look at um, John chapter 6 here. And we're going to be in verse 5. John chapter 6, you probably beat me there to it, but verse 5 says, When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him. Uh, excuse me, I lost my place. John chapter 6, verse 5, sorry. Let's read it again. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? So there's a big multitude, and and uh, <laughs> they're in the middle of the desert. So Jesus is kind of cracking a joke here, uh, telling uh, Philip, uh, How, you know, <laughs> where, 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 where are we going to get the bread to feed all these people, Philip? Like, <laughs> it's kind of a joke. But anyway, verse 6. And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, uh, Philip answered him, 200 uh, penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. So there's just so many people that even if they had all this money, 
in the middle of the desert somehow and there was a place to buy it, they still wouldn't be able to fight, uh, feed everybody. There's so many people. Um, one of his disciples, Andrew Simon, Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five uh, barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Verse 10. Now, now there was much grass in that place, so the men sat down in number about five thousand. And Jesus took the loaves, and we, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise the fishes as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. And we're going to stop there for the sake of time, but I wanted to focus in there on what, uh, what is it? Verse number um, 11 says, And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks. So Jesus gave thanks for the food. Um, that's the first thing he did was gave thanks, but I think it's important to know that uh, God really appreciates a thank you, right? Just a simple thank you, and it's so true. You know, whenever you do something kind for somebody, um, isn't it nice uh, that they say thanks for that, right? To show that, hey, you know, I really appreciate uh, the kind gesture that you did for me, you know what I mean? If you do something nice for somebody and they don't show you that they're thankful for what you did, you're not very motivated to keep being nice to them, right? So, um... But if they give you a thank you card, they say thank you, they give you a phone call, whatever, um, and let you know that, hey, I really appreciate what you did, you know, you're like, you're more likely to be nice to them and do more things that are nice, right? And and if we look at this story, you know, there clearly wasn't enough food to feed, feed 5,000 people, but Jesus, he gave thanks for it anyway. And in our lives, you know, maybe there's an area of your life where you don't have enough. Maybe you don't have enough money. Maybe you don't uh, have enough health to, uh, or strength or whatever. Um, whatever the case is, maybe you're lacking somewhere in your life, but you can always still give thanks for what you do have. Just like Jesus said, hey, we only have uh, five loaves of bread. Let's give thanks for it. <clears throat> and, you know, I, I don't think the lesson is that uh, God's necessarily going to perform a miracle every time, but... Uh, I think the lesson is to just be thankful for what you do have. Let's look at our next example. Um, I think we're going to go to flip over to John chapter 11. So we're in the same book, a few pages over to chapter 11. And this is the passage where Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. And a few days ago, I preached on the power of prayer. I'm not going to re-preach that sermon, but uh, Jesus prays here and says a prayer to and it's so powerful, it resurrects Lazarus back to life. Um, so, uh, giving thanks to God. Uh, Jesus here gives thanks to God for answering that prayer. And so we need to make sure that when we pray for things, that we go back later on and make sure, hey, God, thank you for doing that. Thank you for answering that prayer. Because that's what Jesus uh, is doing. Um Let's look at John chapter 11, and we're going to be in verse 38, if you want to read along with me. Verse 38, the Bible says, Jesus therefore again groaning in himself cometh to the grave, and it was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. And Jesus said, Take ye away the stone, Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou, <clears throat> that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth! And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound 
with a napkin, Jesus said unto them, Loose him, let him go. Wow, amazing. Amazing. There's so much things I could say here. But what I want to focus in on is uh, that verse um, 41 where Jesus said, Father, I thank thee that thou hearest me. You know, God hears your thank yous, right? So don't never uh, not say thank you to God. He hears you. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is Jesus thanked God for answering his prayer before he prayed the prayer. Did you notice that? That's how much faith Jesus had. Because he, he, uh, he said to Martha just before that, you know, I told you, if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. But Jesus believed so much that God was going to answer his prayer that he thanked God for answering his prayer before he said the prayer. Right? That's amazing. When's the last time you thanked God for something that hasn't happened yet, that he hasn't done yet? You should try it sometime. You know, give give somebody a gift uh, as a thank you. You know, thank somebody for doing something for you that they haven't done for you yet. You know, ima imagine if you gave somebody some money and you said, you know what, I really appreciate you uh, uh, cooking me dinner or, or whatever it is tomorrow night. They haven't cooked you dinner yet, right? But you thanked them for it anyways. And then later on, you ask them, Hey, you know, will you cook me dinner? T <laughs> will you cook me dinner tonight? I'd appreciate that. You know, you think they're going to be more inclined to do what you asked them if you already thanked them for it? You know, and I and I so Jesus here, I think he's given a preemptive thank you to God. It's amazing. Um, let's look at another example. Uh, we're going to go backwards to Luke, or excuse me, where are we? I have so many. Examples. Yeah, let's go back to the book of Luke. We're going to be in the gospel according to St. Luke this time. Chapter 10, chapter 10. And I want to focus in on just one verse here in Luke chapter 10, uh, verse 21. Uh, let's just read it here. Uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 21 says, In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee. O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for, for so it seemed good in thy sight. Jesus thanks the Father for keeping things away from people who didn't uh, really deserve to have certain knowledge or certain revelations, and instead revealing it to people who were... Um, who did kind of deserve it, who were babes, who who you wouldn't normally uh, think well, would have certain revelations, right? You know, this reminds me of uh, the word luck. You ever heard that word luck? Hey, good luck to you. You know that the word luck is not found in the Bible, not even one time? There's no luck, There's no luck in the Bible, right? Not even one time. Uh, so many things um, happen in our lives sometimes, that seem like they're by chance. And some people say, wow, you're so lucky. <laughs> but really, it's all God doing everything. God's in control of everything. He's he's pulling the strings of, of certain things that we have no control over. We don't even see them going on most of the time. And, you know, he's really, he's revealing things to some people. He's concealing things from other people. And, and God's doing that. We need to praise him for that because there's no such thing as luck in the Bible. We need to just be thankful and give thanks to God when certain things happen um, that he allows to happen for whatever reason <laughs> that they happen. And uh, anyway, let's look at our last example. Uh, turn, keep, keep going backwards in your Bible. Um, we're going to go to the book of Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14. And this is probably the most famous thank you that people know about that Jesus gave. It's the Last Supper where Jesus breaks bread and gives thanks uh, to God for it. Let's, but let's just look at it real briefly. In Mark chapter 14, starting in verse 22. Um, and, and the Bible says, Mark 14, 22. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed and break it and gave to them and said, Take Eat, this is my body. And he took the cup. When he had given thanks, 
He gave it to them, and they all drank of it. Jesus always gave thanks before a meal, you know. So one of the most simplest things we can do is just simply uh, thank God for the food that we're about to eat before we eat it. Um, I preached that sermon a while back about be, uh, uh, saying thanks uh, to God before a meal. And it, it's, it's, it's important. Um, <clears throat> but uh, the Bible also says that man does not live off bread alone. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So, you know, I think every time before you listen to a sermon or you read your Bible, you also should give thanks. Dear God, thank you. Thank you for what I'm about to hear, your word. Thank you for what I'm about to read, your word. You know, it's important to be thankful, you know, just as Jesus was thankful. And, you know, so we should be uh, giving thanks all the time as well. So those are my examples. I just gave you four uh, examples of Jesus being thankful in the Bible and giving thanks. So now I want to transition to uh, my testimony, personal things that I'm thankful for. Oh man, there's so <laughs> how much time you got? You got all day? Anyways, uh, I'm thankful that God has kept me in good health, right? Currently at this point in my life, you know, my body's in good condition. Uh, I'm strong, I'm healthy. There's no diseases, no injuries, and I'm really thankful to God for that. You know, I struggled for many years with an arm injury, and you know, I've, I've cried many nights um, that God would heal me from that, and, and for the most part, right now I'm healed. I had some uh, problems last week, but that, that, that gone, that's gone away, so praise God for that. And you know, so I'm thankful to uh, that God, God has healing power and he hears my prayers for that. Um, I'm really thankful to serve a God who, because, you know, the doctors, they didn't know uh, what was wrong with me. They didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. But God knew exactly what to do. He knows the end from the beginning. Um, and it's just amazing. So I'm thankful for that. Um, another thing I wanted to be uh, thankful for is My friends, having friends, you know, uh, I, I know I said thanks for my health, that's great, but it's also good to just have friends, have fellowship with people. I mean, it's important to have friends. It's such a blessing in my life. A lot of my friends nowadays um, happen to be from different parts of the world, all over the world, uh, actually. I have friends in, in different countries and all over the world, and it's crazy how a uh, guy could uh, make some of your closest friends people <laughs> that you've never met on the other side of the world even, right? You know, I mean, you know, the thing is, Jesus lives in heaven, right? He's he's far away. I mean, yeah, he lives in my heart too, but you know what I'm saying. Sometimes your, uh, your best friends are people who may not be near to you, may not be right there, but they're still your greatest friends. And it's just been a great blessing for me to have friendship um, for God to bring people into my life who who genuinely care about me, right? Who who root for me uh, to do to do good and who celebrate uh, when I have achievements and things like that. It's just great to have good friends, man. And and uh, to get to get the people away from you, like 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 it's, like, like like I said earlier, you know, it's not about luck that you meet people, right? It's God's God's work, and He's revealing things to people, concealing things. He's taking people out of your life who uh, who uh, uh, don't have your best interest in mind, and so I, I just I thank God for my friends and showing me who my real friends are, and um, it, it reminds me of uh, the Apostle Paul. Uh, if you want to turn to, to turn to the Book of Acts, it's the last chapter just before Romans. I just wanted to look at Acts chapter 28 real quick because uh, uh, Paul um, gives thanks to God for his friends and um, friends that he just met that he had never met before. And I wanted to just look at this real real quick. How uh, This is uh, after Paul's been shipwrecked on a foreign island. And this is like the, I don't know, hundredth time that he's escaped death, right? And and he meets some uh, fellow Christians and some friends that are happy to see him. And they greet him. They're real nice to him. And he thanks God for them. Let's just look at uh, verse 11 here in, in Acts chapter 28. 
and after three months we departed in a ship of Ale Alexandria, which had uh, which had wintered in the in the isle, whose sign was uh, Castor and and Paulu. And landing at Syracuse, we tarried there three days, and from thence we fetched a compass and came to uh, Rahim. And after one day, the south wind blew, and we came uh, the next day to Petioli, where we found brethren. All right. He found him some brethren. He found him some Christians. Man, there's Christians scattered all over the world here in the last days. So great. And, and we desired to tarry with them seven days, and so we went towards Rome. And from thence... When the brethren heard us, they came to meet us as far as a, a pili for him and, and the three taverns, whom when Paul saw, he thanked God and he took courage. And when we came to Rome and uh, the centurion delivered uh, the prisoners to the captain of the guard, uh, but Paul was suffered to dwell by himself with a soldier that kept You know, we're, we're going to stop there, but the, the verse I wanted to focus in was uh, verse 15 where... Um, Paul saw uh, these new brethren that he'd never met before, and he thanked God, right? So he thanks God, not only for the brethren, but the brethren also gave him courage, you know? And, and, and I think that's what I am appreciative of my friends, you know, that friendship, especially Christian friends, they lift up your spirits, they give you courage. They encourage you when times are rough and, and things get tough in this world and well, the world beats you down, but your friends lift you up. The Bible says, iron sharpeneth iron. So give thanks to your friends, guys. And if you don't have any Christian friends, go to church. Go go meet some people, you know. Reach out to people. Because uh, Christian friends will really give you courage and uh, help you serve God more. Um, another thing I wanted to give thanks for. Um, is my work. You know, there are many people out there nowadays out of work because of the pandemic going on in the world and things like that. But, you know, God has blessed me with a job that I could work. And not only uh, do I have a job that I could work, but, you know, it's, it's honest work. It's good work. I really appreciate that the uh, Lord allows me to do this. And, and uh, a lot of the jobs I've had in the past, I haven't had a good boss, right? But so I, I thankful that uh, the the company and the manager that I uh, who manages this company, he's just a really he's a good man. He's honest. He's fair, and he he makes work fun. <laughs> kind of weird, right? Work fun, but yeah, it's true. So I'm, I'm thankful for that. And you know, there's just so many things that I uh, that I could be thankful for. Um, uh, but I, what I wanted to show you is is a quick list. I made a list before I uh, made this sermon. Of things I'm thankful for. Things I'm thankful for. Um, full list. And uh, I encourage you to do the same. Sit down and, and write down and count all your blessings one by one. Um, I encourage you to do that. It, it's really humbling. It keeps us humble. keeps us thankful and focused on what really matters in our life. Last thing I wanted to say before I close this message is... Uh, I just wanted to mention that I'm thankful to be having this platform to preach uh, God's Word. You know, I don't take this lightly, this book and this opportunity to preach. You know, in the, in the, in, in the old days, you would not be able to do this over the internet, right? You, you couldn't just preach to people over the internet. And, and uh, like right now, I could reach the whole world um, just right here in, uh, in this studio room here that I have. And... Uh, it's just, it's just, it's, it's not easy to write these sermons, and you know, I try to make them informative and and accurate for you guys. Uh, and it takes effort um, and time, but you know, I'm I'm just so thankful that God's given me this opportunity to preach. Um, it's such a blessing to me in my life. I learn a lot, and uh, I know there's a lot of people out there who wish they could silence me and shut me up and shut God up and stop this word from uh, being spread, but. Uh, but by God's grace, he allows me to keep preaching his word. And I really do appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. God, I appreciate that. But anyways, um, that's it. That's my message for the day. I wanted to give a personal testimony and talk about giving thanks today. We looked at how Jesus gave thanks. The Apostle Paul gave thanks. It's important to give thanks. So um, give thanks uh, in your lives, guys, because uh, you never know what tomorrow uh, may bring. Um, so count your blessings today. Anyway, thank you for listening to this video. 
Um, and until next time, guys, God bless you. And as always, um, I'm going to give God the last word. But before then, let's uh, let's say a prayer. And um, the closing reading will be in Psalms chapter 40 if you want to read along. But let's pray first. God bless, guys. Thanks for listening. Have a good day. <clears throat> dear Heavenly Father, dear God, thank you so much for everything that you do for us. There's just so much we could be thankful for, Lord, and I think most of all, I thank you for salvation, for your precious son, Jesus, that you gave us um, as, as a gift, as a sacrifice for our sins. Lord, if that's all we ever had, if that's the only thing that we had to be thankful for, that would be enough as a home in heaven after this life uh, passes away. Um, that's all we would need to rejoice and praise you every single day of our lives. Lord, we thank you for forgiving our sins and dying for us. But Lord, you're so good to us. Even you give us more than that. You give us friends. You give us family. You give us work. And we're just so uh, thankful for that, Lord. If we, if I wanted to sit here and list everything, I'd be here all day, Lord. And I still would not be able to list everything uh, that I'm thankful that you do for us. Lord, as I uh, as I thank you, you know, I, I pray that you take care of everybody all over the world. I know uh, there's been disasters in the Philippines. Lord, I ask that you be with those people and take care of those people. And I'm and I'm thankful that you are able to do that, Lord, and take care of people on the other side of the world. And uh, Lord, I just want to not focus on the bad things today, but focus on being thankful to you and. I thank you for creating everything, Lord. Everything you created is good. And, I, and I'm just thankful for all of it, Lord. Just keep uh, keep everything that you do at the forefront, f- forefront of our minds, Lord, today. And uh, help us put the bad stuff, uh, put the bad stuff aside. Uh, we thank you for this message, Lord. And all the future messages that we're going to hear today or tomorrow or the next day or whenever. Uh, we thank you for that, too. We love you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. As always, um, giving God the last word. Like I said, we're going to be in Psalms chapter 40. Chapter 40. God bless you guys. Have a good day. Psalms chapter 40. And we're going to read verses 1 through 5. Psalm 40, verse 1 through 5. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works, which thou hast done, and thy thoughts, which are to us to usward. They cannot be reckoned up in order to thee, If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Amen.